This video continues our exploration of the Play Framework using Scala. We have a fairly complete web app. We're close to having our first version of our task list done. We have the ability to log in. We have the ability to create users. One of the things we're missing right now is when we log in, the information from the login does not get to the list of tasks that we show. And we do show tasks that are pulled from our, uh, from our data model but they are using a fixed username and they really should be using the username that has been authenticated uh, when the the user either creates a user or validates a login. In order to have this type of information passed around from one call to another it's typical to use something called a session. Now in play sessions are stored as encrypted cookies so we should talk about that a little bit and what that means. A cookie is a small piece of memory that exists on the client's browser that you have access to. And things about cookies, A, yes, they are small, uh, so you don't get much memory with them. They also expire, and they have limits as to who can read them. Um, now, inevitably, you're familiar with cookies because pretty much every website you visit these days tells you that they have a cookie policy. Cookies are often used for this thing called session. So one of the things to remember about the about the HTTP protocol is that it is stateless. Okay, so when you get an HTTP request as a server, by default it does not tell you anything about whether it is coming from the same person as some other request. You don't know really where it's coming from. So you have to store that information somehow. And the way this is done is if you put it in the cookies, you give them a cookie when they make another request, they send you back the cookies that you have access to. Okay, And session cookies in play are encrypted because they will store information that is potentially somewhat sensitive to you. Uh, in our case, what I'm interested in, in order to get this task list to work, I need the username. So what I'm going to do is when we validate the user and when we do a create user, this redirect here, I'm going to attach a session to it. And we can do that by saying with session. Remember, play kind of follows the Scala philosophy of things being immutable. So instead of altering this redirect and doing some assignment to it, we make a call uh, afterwards, which gives us a new request that has a session added to it. Now, the session itself is basically a map. It's a map of string to string, where the first string is a key and the second string is the value that we want uh, to store under that key. In this case, I want to store their username. Now the fact that this string happens to match that variable name which happens to match that string is just for me as a human, giving it meaning. That doesn't have to be the case. This string here is actually going to be the username that we pulled off of their post request. So now this is being stored in these encrypted cookies. And one of the things about that is it's the encryption doesn't even allow the client to know what's in it. So you could put values inside of this session that you don't want them to know about, but you want to be able to get back from them. So for example, you don't want people to know that you're storing their username or whatnot in here. And part of the reason for that is because if someone knew how that was being done, they could modify their own cookies and act like they were someone else. And that would be a significant uh, hole in your security. So we add that on to our request. We're going to do the same thing here on our redirect. Okay, So their browser will now be storing this encrypted cookie that has their username in it. And as long as we don't do anything to get rid of that, we will maintain uh, this session cookie. So now when we get to the task list, the question is, well, how do we pull that out? As with some of these other actions, that information is stored inside of the request. In fact, there is a request dot session. And if we look at the type of that, well, that's a session. Uh, the session is basically a uh, like a map. And so I can get from it. Now I'm going to use get here 
uh, because no, this is going to give me back an option of string. There are two possibilities here. Because task list is just a normal get route, someone could actually type in the URL and try to get to a task list. Okay. Uh, at, if they did it that way, they would not have a session associated with them, and so there wouldn't be a username. This is someone who's trying to get to a task list without going through a login. Well, what should you do to such a person? You should redirect them. So I'm going to change this just to make it clear. So username option, as we often do with our options, I'm going to map this username rocket and then do the same type of thing we did above get or else and literally I'm going to copy this redirect because if they somehow came to the task list without type it without having a session that included a username that means they got here in a bad way and I want to redirect them back to the login page if they got here with a username, I want to look up their tasks in the map using their username and display those. Okay, that was a reasonable amount of code. Let's see how that works. So if we do a refresh on our login page, now of course that deleted any other users because once again we're doing an in-memory model so I can create hundreds of users but as soon as I recompile they're all gone. So first we should ver verify that our original user still works. Okay, that looks good. If I create another user, they get a task list, but it doesn't have anything in it. Okay, and if we come back to here, log in as Mark again, sure enough, that's happy. Log in as John and that has nothing there. Excellent, okay, that's exactly the behavior that we expect from this. Okay, so we are, we have the information because the only information we have right now in our tasks is the stuff that's hard coded. I have to keep hitting back to get back to the login screen. Any real application should definitely have a log out. So why don't we take the last minutes of this video and go ahead and implement that. So let's go to our task list here. I have a main, I have the task list, I display all the tasks. I'll just go ahead here at the bottom and we'll create a new div. And inside of this div, I am just gonna create a regular link and the href is going to point to a logout link. I don't have one of these yet. So let's go ahead and let's add one in here, def, Logout is an action. This action is going to give us a redirect. In fact, here, let's redirect back to the login page. Sounds like a great place to be after you log out. But we have to get rid of their session. So I am going to use the call with new session. And that basically blanks out the session that they had. In order to be able to get to this, we need to add a route. Unlike the other things that we've been uh, calling that, that have added sessions, this doesn't need to be a post. We're not sending any significant information here, so we'll just call logout1 controllers.tasklist.logout, and now we can put the link to where logout goes, and this would be routes dot h no, routes dot task list one dot logout once again by doing the reverse routing if I screwed something up there it should ostensibly be fixed when I come here okay now let's check if that works so one of the things we didn't do before was show that if I log in properly, I get here, okay, we have a link. If I go back to login one, and then I type in task list one, I get back to Mark's 
set of elements because we still have a session that's stored. Let's do a logout and then try to go back to the task list. This is that situation where you're on a computer, you log out of a site, someone comes after you, and they try to get back to that same site with your login information. It doesn't work. Okay. So when I went to the task, to the task list with no session, it automatically redirected me back to the login page. That's exactly the behavior that we want. So we're using sessions where we have a login that stores our user information. We use that to get the appropriate tasks and then we can log out and clear that session. Okay. So our login logout is, is completely handled. All we need to add now is the ability to add tasks and remove tasks. And we'll come back to that in future videos.